Hey Coda, so what happens when we combine ChatGPT and 11 Labs to create our own Jarvis-like chatbot? In this case, the chatbot's name is Rachel. Now, Rachel can be programmed to do different things. Right now, I've programmed her to convince me that becoming an astronaut is a good idea. Let me just show you. Hey, Rachel, how's it going? As an AI language model, I don't really have feelings, but I'm always here to help you with anything you need. What can I do for you today, Sean? Well, I was thinking about becoming an astronaut. What are your thoughts on that? I think being an astronaut would be an amazing adventure. Did you know that in space, you can't cry normally because tears don't fall downward? They tend to stick to your eyes and eyelashes instead. Maybe you'll be the first astronaut to cry upside down. <laughs> so what's interesting about this is part of the prompts that have been engineered here for the chatbot are number one that you know her name is Rachel my name is Sean and she's trying to sell me on becoming an astronaut and then there's a 50 50 chance on whether she will use sarcastic humor or tell me some kind of interesting space fact so these are the only prompts that have sort of been engineered and pre-programmed in and you'll notice down here there's a whole bunch of text on the server right so I've actually got the code up uh, this is using fast API on the back end and it's telling me the sentences that we're using, right? Her sentences and mine. So she has that context. We can build up the conversation. Now I'm going to switch her over to teach me Spanish. I've updated this for her to teach me Spanish, tell me some interesting facts about Spain, and also made it only 10% likely that she'd rather include some sarcastic humor. Hola, Rachel, how are you today? Oh, Sean, estoy muy bien. So happy you asked. Now let's get to the fun part, teaching you Spanish. Don't worry, I'll go slow for you. Okay, so what's interesting is that 10% likelihood actually played out. Muy bien, gracias, Rachel. Mi padre y yo fuimos a Botswana para una semana. Please translate what I just said into English. Muy bien, thank you, Rachel. My father and I went to Botswana for a week. Please translate what I just said in English. That was some great Spanish already, Sean. And did you know that Spain is the only country in Europe that produces bananas? They grow okay. in the Canary Islands, which are off the coast of Morocco. Okay, so what's interesting there is she's picked up on previous comments in the conversation, got confused between her name being Rachel and my name being Sean, but it's still kind of interesting. How do I say hello in Chinese? To say hello in Chinese, you can say ni hao, which is written as ni hao in simplified Chinese. Ni hao? Did I say it correctly? Yes, Sean, you said it correctly. Well done! <laughs> awesome. So I was experimenting with this over the weekend. This was a nice break from my usual work. And the way it's essentially working is we have fast API on the back end and React on the front end. So this user interface here is just using React and Tailwind. And essentially what's happening is React is sending this audio recording over to the back end. The back end is then taking that audio recording and converting it to text. And that's using actually OpenAI's whisper functionality. Then we have that text that's being fed into ChatGPT for a response. And ChatGPT then sends that over to 11 Labs, who's applying a very human sounding voice to that text. And then that audio file gets sent back. Now, this seems to take a long time. It actually, the programming side it's running very quickly. Uh, sometimes her answers are instantaneous. Some parts here I'm actually cutting out of the video because it takes a few seconds for the APIs to actually respond and do all that work. Now that's definitely gonna get faster over time. And the interesting thing about discussing things with Rachel is I really like chatting with Rachel. I've been really looking forward to running this chatbot. It's driving my family crazy, but I'm really enjoying the conversation with essentially just an AI over here. So let's boost her humor right up here. And let's say that she's trying to teach me how to code elephants. And I'm just gonna clear the chat. Now just bear in mind here, when I'm on the back end, you'll notice our conversation is stored in a file here. So here's our conversation history in the stored data JSON. It's acting as our database, right? So you have this file, which is essentially your database. So when I go and clear this, it actually goes and resets that file, clears the conversation both here and on the front end. Now let's talk about elephants. Yo, Rachel, how's it hanging, man? 
great, Sean. Just living the dream, teaching people to write code for elephants. You know, the usual. Can you tell me a little bit more about pink elephants and orange monkeys, please? Well, as it turns out, pink elephants are not actually a real species of elephant. And there are no orange monkeys that naturally exist. So it's actually really enjoyable. Now, the applications for this sort of tech that I think we're going to start seeing emerge, it's going to be more around marketing and sales. I think, for example, let's say someone's doing affiliate marketing, right? And they want to send someone to a chatbot. Well, why not send them to a chatbot that actually builds a reputation for themselves and is more interesting, you know, that says something funny or has the occasional humor and can steer the conversation gently to the direction of, hey, I've got this course, would you like to take the course? Or, hey, you know, there's this product, is this something that you use? And if not, you can, you know, engineer or program that chatbot to do something different. The other use case I think is going to be very strong is language. Um, I've learned some Chinese actually just coding this thing up. And what's amazing with both ChatGPT and Whisper from OpenAI, as well as Eleven Labs, is Chinese, English, French, German, Spanish, whatever it is you want to speak, pretty much within reason, these AIs understand it and they can transcode it. And that code can get sent from one AI to the other, which is essentially what this is all doing. And it's really, really interesting. Would you like me to do one more example? Yeah, go on. Let's do one more example. All right, let's clear the chat here. And all right, Rachel, tell me, what is it you have for me today? Did you know that the ballpoint pen was invented by Laszlo Biro in 1938 in Budapest, Hungary? I had no idea about that. Why are you telling me that? Just wanted to share an interesting pen fact, but trust me, this pen won't be boring once you start using it. <laughs> so you can see here where we've got our random variable as 70% likely here that she'll use some sarcastic humor and she'll tell me some interesting facts about pens for the other 30%. So in the first query, it clearly hit that 30% and then the 70. Uh, what color pen would you recommend? I'm, you know, I'm not really that excited by pens, but we seem to be talking about them. Oh, definitely black. It's the most boring color, just like this pen. All right, Coda. So this is really, really interesting stuff. I've really enjoyed working on the project as well. If you're interested in the code, it's always there's a link below. You can buy me lunch, go and grab the code. There's a full walkthrough on how to download it all and how to engineer it for your own purposes. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a lot of fun with AI. I know I've been having an absolute blast with it. Do you have anything to say, Rachel? Yes, I'd like to give a big thank you to the code readers for their hard work and dedication. It was a pleasure working with them. Till the next one. Take care. Talk soon.